Redditors whose life was changed by a DNA test what happened. My life wasn't changed. But I was contacted by someone on 23 and May wondering how we were connected since he thought he knew all his second cousins in the area. I recognized the surname as that of my biological grandfather. I answered this man's question by detailing how my grandfather had gotten my grandmother pregnant out of wedlock. Then it turned out he was already married with a family, forcing my father to be put up for adoption. I guess the guy didn't like that story and blocked me. What an actual response is pretty much the only way his question could be answered. If he knew all of his other cousins, what else could he expect you to say? Probably a knee-jerk response to unpleasant information about a much-loved grandfather. Maybe he hoped that enough distant relatives had combined to create another distant family member with enough genetic markers to present as a second cousin. Or maybe that your grandmother had betrayed his grandfather and lied about the existence of a child, therefore absolving his family of all guilt and making your family the ones at fault. People will grasp at anything to protect and preserve their family's innocence. My family has been just my mom and I for a while now. I took one and pretty much got exactly what I expected. My mom took hers and it came back that she wasn't Jewish at all. This was extremely confusing because her father and his family escaped the Nazis. Her father was definitely Jewish. She immediately knew he wasn't her father. It was horrible at first. My mom was devastated, as I'm sure you can imagine. She lost part of her identity. She looked at the part that connects you to people in your family and found someone listed under close relative whom she had never heard of. My mom's parents hadn't spoken to her in decades, so there was no asking the monsieur. She reached out to a close relative and found out that his parents lived next door to my mom's parents before my mom turned one. My mom remembered a rumor that one of her cousins told her when she was little. Her mom had an affair with the next-door neighbor. Turns out, the next-door neighbor was my mom's real father. He has three kids around my mom's age, and three kids about 30 years younger. As you can see, he got around lol. He passed away a few years back, but the family welcomed us with open arms. When we met them, it was an instant connection, like we had been a part of their lives forever. They brought out pictures, and boy does my mom look like her father. They told me that my grandpa would be so proud of me and my accomplishments, some of our interests and talents aligned. They told us we looked like the rest of the family, and we did. We never had that before. My mom and I went from only having each other, to her having six siblings having nieces and nephews and me having aunts and uncles and tons of cousins in a family reunion to go to each summer. I have family in five different states, little cousins to teach, and big cousins to look up to. My mom has a huge family, and so many people to call and talk to and to ask her how she's doing. It's amazing to watch. Weddings, birthday parties, and lots of love. Funerals, too. One of my uncles passed away, but I got a chance to meet him before he did. I think he was waiting to meet my mom and me. He was an amazing person and even though I didn't know him for long, I loved Hi Monsieur. My family has turned this into the best experience of my life, and my mom's too. Edit. Spacing. This one is really nice. I'm happy for you guys. I ordered one of the earlier versions of 23 and May back in 2013. Looked through some fun generic traits and ancestral history, then forgot about it for a few years. Until one day in 2017 when I received an email that a close relative was discovered. The connection listed them as a first cousin. Which was weird because I thought that I had no immediate cousins and no one in my family. Recognized the name. A few months later, another one was added and finally a third a couple of months after that. Turns out my uncle has multiple illegitimate children and they all took DNA tests around the same time. 
All three of them found out that he was their dad and thanks to my initial result connecting him and working, working together to compare family history. They're older so it's more of a peace of mind at this point in their lives. But I'm glad that they were able to find their real dad through the experience. I was adopted at birth back in the 1960s. I had a happy childhood but both of my adoptive parents died of cancer in the early 1990s. I sent my DNA into Ancestry in the hope that I'd make contact with one or both of my birth parents. Literally all I had was my mother's name on the birth certificate and my father's name on the photocopied set of adoption paperwork. When I first checked the result I was disappointed to find only a few third and fourth cousins. I emailed the ones who looked as if they visited the site regularly. It turned out they were all related to my birth father. He had also died sometime in the early 1990s. Then one day I logged back onto the site and found that I'd matched with a first cousin. I sent a tentative email saying that I'd been given up as a baby and appreciated that it was a sensitive family matter and that if he didn't want to get involved I was fine with that. But could he give me some more information about my family? He replied the next day and told me he was my uncle, and that my mother was still alive. She had given birth to me as a teenager, but had reluctantly had to give me up as her family was relegous and birth dad was a deadbeat. I made contact with her by email earlier this year. It turns out I have a half-brother and sister, as well as nieces and nephews. We are taking things slowly at the moment. But after so many years it's amazing to have a mother again. We have the same likes, dislikes and politics. I'm hoping to meet up with her next year. I'm glad things have worked out well for you and your family. My mother passed away a few weeks ago and I found adoption papers hidden away in her stuff. So I have a half-brother out there somewhere that I never knew about. I don't know whether to try and reach out to him or not. Like you said it's a sensitive matter. On balance I would say give it a try. I had the same reservations at first but I'm really glad I took that first step while there was still time. Both my pi tested positive as cystic fibrosis carriers. I don't know the exact chances of this but it's low none of our family members have CF. This was after we had our first child but has really changed how we feel about any more children. I have a friend who was a carrier and her husband was two. She had two children with CF. Her son lived to be eight and her daughter passed away at 16. Very sad. I guess when they had the second child they were hoping to be that one in four. To be fair, when both parents are carriers there is a three in four chance the child will not have the disease. Only one in four will be affected. That is very sad though and although a 1 in 16 chance for both children to be affected seems rare. It's bound to happen given how many families there are in the world. My friend did a test to see what her ancestry is recently. She ended up discovering who her dad actually is and learning that her dad is still alive. Not dead like her mother said. So that's something. Whack, his gear, his J-E-W-L-E-R-Y whack, his foot stance whack, the way he talks whack, the way he doesn't even like to smile whack, me, I'm tight as fuck, my dad and his two siblings found out they all have different fathers, one other brother has already passed so we'll never know if there was a fourth baby daddy or not, my dad is a junior and named his son the third after a man who it turns out is no relation, our last name is an Irish name and was 0% Irish as his bio father was likely 100% German. My grandmother was a quiet, devout Catholic woman as far as I always knew. So it's been wild finding out she had some major secrets. If they all have different fathers, it's entirely possible they were sperm donor babies. The history of sperm donation actually goes back further than people realize, and if none of the kids turn out to be the putative fathers. My first thought is sperm donation. Not necessarily an affair. 
My brother and I did 23 and May tests and when we went to compare our results it said he was only my half-brother. We thought we were full-blood related our whole lives. Turns out, our biological mum cheated, mom cheated on my dad and made him believe the baby was his. My dad was 20 at the time and it changed the whole course of his life. He loves my brother as his own but damn, I had a very rare cancer as a child. I was always worried that any children I might have would suffer the same fate. When my wife and I got serious about parenthood, I learned that there was a genetic test for the type of cancer I had. I submitted a sample and it came back completely negative for any cancer markers meaning my kids would have essentially no chance of developing the same disease. This was a huge relief, but at the same time it meant that my cancer was completely spontaneous which changed an incredibly rare cancer into an almost impossible cancer. This profoundly illustrated just how little control we humans have over our fate. My mother and brother both passed away from extremely aggressive brain tumors. The doctor assured us that there was no genetic link and said, the best assurance I could offer you is to give you all an MRI. But that only helps you right now. I know quite a few people so worried about cancer. They change so many things in their lives to try to avoid it. My attitude now is that if it happens, it happens. There's no rhyme or reason to cancer. And GT, smoking or the rest of your family. My mother-in-law just died of tobacco-related lung cancer. She wasn't even 60. My wife is devastated. My father-in-law is crushed. There's a giant void in the family now. She just couldn't quit. I know that if she could have quit, she would have. But for a variety of reasons that aren't mine to share, she just couldn't kick the addiction. It was just hardwired into her brain. If you ever need motivation to quit smoking, just picture your spouse and children crying together as the people from the hospital take your body away.